We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurst, Stiff Farm going 99. Don't get it twisted. One and all with prime time. John Taylor, Jerry Rice down the side. Line. This is the 49er Faithful UK show. And that was week three, an entirely different sort of show. The Niners fall to one and two after a disappointing loss to the LA Rams, despite a monster game from Juwan Jennings. Some familiar issues meant that even though we led the entire game, we end up on the losing side. I'm Gareth Ellis, and helping me to make some sense of it all, I am joined by Paul Hope. What up there, Phil? And Lee Gowland. <laughs> mm, yeah, take, taking it well. It's been a yeah, it's been a it's been a crappy Monday. Let's face it, it's been a crappy Monday. It has. Yeah. It has. The rums of all people. Yeah. Miserable Monday. That? Not Victory Monday, miserable yeah. Monday. Monday. Yeah. So do you have some talking points? I mean let's yeah, let's not beat about the bush. Let's let's get the therapy session started. The doctors are in. Paul, do, kick us off. Do you want to go first, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. So the sky is not falling in, despite what you may have seen on social media today. A game of two halves. And the third and final talking point is Joan, Randy, Jerry, Jennings. We have to talk about that performance despite the loss. Oh, yeah. It's got to be some positives. Lee, what have you got? <laughs> so I'm not going with any positives. <laughs> <laughs> so... Ronnie Bell, special teams, defence. Those are my three talking points. And there's somebody on the defence who's not going to be immune to criticism. Mm. Well, so, well, you've not we've narrowed you. it down, have we? Um, I've, I've got uh, have a day, JJ, because that is worth mentioning. Um, I'm also very thankful for Brock Purdy. Um, and I alluded it to it slightly at the beginning. A, a sense of deja vu. I felt like I'd seen that kind of performance and game before um and that's what worried me or uh, concerned me most um should we start with the sky falling in um it's week three uh paul um how how close is the sky to collapsing i mean we blew a 14 point lead we blew a 10 point fourth quarter lead that, that sounds familiar we never trailed until our last play of the game we had over 400 yards of offense we converted 50% of third downs and we won the time of possession. So yes, that defeat was inexcusable. It was frustrating. It was disappointing. I saw a few people comment that it was like watching Jimmy under centre. And that's why I have to start with the sky is not falling in. Because if you watched Brock Purdy in that game, you can compare to previous quarterbacks we've had under this regime i'm sorry fellas i don't yeah. often call things out on, on this show i'm normally more positive but brock purdy absolutely balled out last night 22 of 30 passes 292 yards three touchdowns zero interceptions i know we had the fumble which was a obviously a dark point but he had a 137.1 passer rating and he put the team <laughs> on his back the criticism chaps is brock needs the avengers and he didn't have the Avengers last night. He had Johan Jennings, who looked pretty much like Randy, Randy Moss and Jerry Rice at part. But other than that, the sky's not falling on this team. It's not like we've got been blown out two weeks in a row. I, I'm still struggling, Lee, to kind of grasp how we lost that game. And I know you said at the start there's no positives for you. There is a few for me, but that's why I wanted to well, start. Well, I didn't mean there wasn't any positives from the game, Paul. What I meant is my three talking points were positive. <laughs> fair, and, fair enough, boss. Fair enough, I, boss. I will have some positives towards the end. So is the sky actually falling in then, Lee? No, I don't think it is. I, I don't think it is. I think what we've seen last night is it, it's poor discipline. Poor discipline. Rookie mistakes, uh, and when I say rookie mistakes, I mean rookie mistakes in, in the seeing rookie mistakes rather than a rookie making mistake. But the, there was there was people not doing the jobs. There was people who let the team down, and I think it's fair to say that. Um, you normally say don't point at that player, but it was obvious which players were really, really struggling in that game. We can't get away from that, and I think we have to point that out just for fairness, yeah. because I think there is. Um, I don't think the sky is falling in. I, I think 
obviously we, we've got Drake Greenlaw to come back we've got CMC to come back we've got Debo we've got Kittle we, we've, we've got major players to come back I've been saying since um, just before just before the season started when Ayuk signed I said it'll be the Patriots game before he's back to full fitness mm. It's going to take him a good three weeks to get back to full fitness. So, I mean, we are experiencing the type of drops with um, Ayuk that we did in his very first season, his rookie season. But this time, it's purely because he's had no preparation. Trent Williams, again, he he didn't really have any preparation and that's kind of shown as well. Mm. So, no, I I don't think the sky's fallen in at all. I, I think it's a little blip, but it does make it a lot harder to get to the playoffs. Statistically speaking, when you start one and two, it's difficult to make the playoffs. But Thanks you look at who else is in the division. <laughs> yeah, go on, Gareth, follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. The, the sky's not falling in, but it's going to be really hard to make the playoffs. Or it, harder. Uh, I think. I think you're right. I think there was there was one place I'm going to go straight to. I think on your on your list. Let's get it done. Uh, Ronnie Bell. He had some special uh, um, in enough of an impact on the game for you to name him in your uh, three talking points lee um so i'm going to take cover and and hand it over to you for 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 the ronnie bell appreciation society yeah so ronnie bell i mean last season and this season before last night's game you, you could see he's dropping balls left right and center he doesn't fill me with any confidence whatsoever um, I'm very surprised that he got as many snaps as he did. I expected Chris Conley to actually get more snaps than him. Um, I'm absolutely gobsmacked that Cowing got zero snaps. That That is unbelievable. And, and let, let's say it how it is. He dropped three pivotal catches. Mm. They were pivotal because of the down we were on and the stage of the game we were in. And that last one, it couldn't have been placed any better. I know Brock Purdy's turned around and said he could have thrown it better. That, that's, he, he could have. He could have thrown it better, but it makes absolutely no difference. No. That was a catchable ball. Stevie Wonder could have very, caught that ball. Very catchable yes. ball. Yeah, Stevie Wonder could have caught that ball. And you saw from Shanahan's reaction on the sideline, it, it was almost criminal to drop that ball. And you go back to what Paul said about um, people saying, oh, Brock Purdy reminds us of Jimmy Garoppolo. He had what eight, nine incompletions, six drops. Yeah, three, three from three from Bell, two from Ayuk, and I think the other one was from Sorbet. I wasn't sure if it was Sorbet or Mason, um, because the one that Juwan Jennings had early in the first quarter might be in the very first throw actually. Um, that wasn't classed as a catchable throw. From, so certainly, from what I, I think gather, one, so one was thrown throw. away, and there wasn't anything yeah. there. So. Yeah, one went over. Ayuk said. Um, they said on the commentary that he overthrew it, but I don't think he was actually thrown to Ayuk. I think he was thrown in his direction, but out yeah, was, because everybody was covered. Yeah. On that point, but yeah, you move on, bad. if you take those incompletions out, and this is why this guy's not falling in, you take those incompletions out of the stats, he was averaging 12.2 yards per pass, and he had a 91.7 completion rate. And we had Ronnie Bell as the player watch last year. And uh, you did 10 jersey for well, the show had him, Gareth. You know, we're, we're team. Come on, don't be throwing people under the bus. Okay, that number 10 jersey <laughs> is just we talk about curses and the watch mm. party. You see the number 10 with a 49ers player on, like you said, Lee, a professional footballer should be catching that ball. He catches that ball, the game is totally different. And we mm. that's why we love the NFL. You could go back through any of those catches, but I think two out of the three, Lee, were ugly. He, he definitely needs to put the game away. And like you said, it's well documented that Shanahan doesn't like his rookie receivers. But surely, after that, Cowan has to get a chance. Or like you said, Conley. I think he used Bell's pace to kind of give us that deep ball threat that the Rams were doing to us. But yeah. So when I saw it at first there. glance, when the ball got batted down, I thought the defender had batted it down. Because when you play, you go up to get the ball. Normally, the defender bats it down. And then you see the replay and it's like, Ronnie Bell, why aren't you catching? And he had his hands and everything. And I said to Gareth off there, there's a photo floating around on Twitter and there's Jennings with the defender draped over him. And then there's Ronnie Bell and it says, one of these is a catch. And I thought, oh, for crying out loud. But it's true. You've got to catch that ball. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And what you said there, Bell was on that field because of the speed. 
Because what I was going to say is I can guarantee you that Chris Connolly would have um, caught all three of those balls that mm-hmm. Ronnie Bell dropped. However, Chris Connolly would probably not be in the position that Bell was because he's not as quick as Bell. And I think that's the only reason Ronnie Bell was there, to stretch the defence with his speed. But well, it's, not, it's and- not good enough because it, it's a yeah. wasted part. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's not stick the boot into him too much more. But I think he's he's had a big opportunity there and he's and he's come up short badly. Um, He had. Yeah, I think it was three opportunities to catch. So it wasn't just that last one. Yeah, you've you've got to think that not necessarily being cut at this stage of the season, but you would think that the next guy up is is potentially going to get the chances, which which should be Cowing or uh, Connolly. Um, Yeah, not one to remember for uh, Ronnie Bell. Um, Where should we go next? I think defence is going to be a a meat of it. Um, And I think, Lee, if you're anything like me, there might be quite a list of names um, on this one as well of people who who didn't have their best game ever. Um, let's let's wind up Lee a little bit more and go to Paul first, because um, Lee's not fully fully wound up. He's he's only pale pink. He's not I mean, turned nine as red yet. For context, everybody, Lee texted the group chat earlier and said he's never been more angry after watching a game back. So Gareth is doing to Gowland what Gowland does to you, like he's teasing it up. But let's mm-hmm. make no bones about this: the worst game of the season for the defense. Stafford was airing it out and the I said at the start, Gareth, a game of two halves. The second half, it was go deep because either someone will catch it or there'll be a pass interference. And instead, the Rams just looked to pick up on those matchups that we're worried about. Um, Yidham, if I've said that wrong, I apologise, but they targeted him. He gave up catches mm-hmm. on all five of his targets. He also gave up the 48-yard pass interference, which led to the first score for the Rams. Devondre Campbell... He showed what he did at the Packers. He's just struggling in pass coverage. He gave up the 15-yard touchdown to Williams on their same drives that penalty, which then it cut the lead to 14-7. And we talk about momentum, mistake-free football on this show, and the momentum started to shift a little bit. And the Rams, as Carl Shanahan said, we wanted to kind of kill any hope that they had. And <laughs> we didn't do that. Mm. And defensively, while we had three sacks and we talked in the preview about putting that pressure on Stafford, we, we didn't put the pressure on him. He had all day. There was one of his throwaways where he literally went across all his progressions. He escaped out of the pocket. He went across the other side of the field. And even then, Gareth, I was like, something could happen here. But uh, Sorensen's come in for a lot of stick on Twitter, Lee. I've had a lot of people say, burn it to the ground, fire him. Now, the positivity, Gareth, I'm trying to remain, is you cast your mind back to 2021. And the same people were calling for D'Amico Ryans to be fired. And, and Salah before struggling. that. And Salah, Salah. Really struggled. I mean, Staley's been brought into a lot of fanfare, but this defence looks like a Staley defence and the Rams attacked it in the middle. They ran up the middle. They went over our linebackers with the deep ball and it was just kind of sinking feeling. So, Lee, have I wound up enough yet? Cause we're he's, all he's, ready enough. he's ready enough. He's ready enough now. Back away. <laughs> well, Back away, I'm getting Jenny. there. I'm getting there. So, I mean, yeah, you you kind of got that spot on there, Paul. Uh, Yedem, he he had a really poor game. Um, Mooney Ward, I thought he was bang average, Um, if not below average. Yeah, at best, you're right. Um, G.A. Brown, G.A. Brown got one of our top grades. Yeah, he was constantly in front of his man and not behind him. Uh, And that was something that um, we pulled out last week. He he needs to get behind his man. Um, and I think he was responsible for a couple of big players as well because he was the wrong side of his man. It's like football in the UK. Get defence side of your man. Get goal side of your man. Otherwise, you're going to let him pass. Um, Malik Collins was, a was for me, a bright spot. He, he was probably one of the better players on, on defence. Um, Yvonne Hargrave, that, that player towards mm-hmm. the end where he just stood look. up and, and Shanahan said, oh, yeah, he's, he's got a tricep injury. He just wasn't trying. Um, now, something for you to go away and do some homework on. Because I I thought this last season, and I've definitely thought it uh, the first three games, and this morning I sat and counted it. Nick Borsa, on 70% of the snaps, he's the last defensive lineman to move. 
Whereas if you go back to his Defensive um, Player of the Year award that season, he was always the first player off the line. He was sharp and he was gone. And I thought last year he kind of missed a, a step or two. And then this year, watching him again, like I said, 70% of the time, he's last off the line to move. I don't know if it's by design. It could be by design. I, I, I don't know. But he's definitely changed from two seasons ago to this season. And that's a little bit worrying. I, I, I don't know if that... It's just the way he's, he's decided that he's going to play or whether or not he's just doesn't seem motivated. Now, I know he gets a lot of double coverage, um, so I took notice of that. And to be honest, I think it was less than half the snaps he mm. had that he was double covered. And he just didn't seem to be able to get round the uh, the backup left tackle, which was, again, disappointing. He had that one hole call. He probably had more holes, to be honest. But he had the one that was called, which um, I was absolutely gobsmacked about. I know it was blatantly obvious, but it never gets called on Nick Bosa. Um, so, so Nick's come in for a little bit of criticism there because mm-hmm. I don't think he's playing up to his billing. Um, I didn't think Fred had a great game at all. I, I, I thought he... I thought he was one of our better players, but I didn't think he had a great game. Um, Hafanga came in. He he made a couple of stops early on, but then it was a quiet game for the rest of the game for him. Demo, I think maybe he's... There was a couple of, couple of players where he could have done better, but by and large, again, Demo was one of the better players again. Um, who else have we got? Leonard. Le- <laughs> Leonard uh, Floyd kept... Uh, let us down a couple of times and you've mentioned Devon, Devondre Campbell I mean putting him in coverage is just a nightmare mm. I th- it's just I think, a nightmare I think you've mentioned pretty much everybody on the on the defensive I, side I haven't mentioned DFF when he went flat on his face mm. that kind of summed up the whole defence yeah there's that he, there was nobody anywhere near him <laughs> and he just went down like a bag Do of you know, I think that shows like, our scheme with Fred and Greenlaw the linebackers cover up a lot of the mistakes. And like you said, Gareth, the front seven, either there to eat. I mean, Stafford had, on average, like 3.13 seconds to throw in the NFL. You can't give a quarterback with that arm. He didn't look hurried, yeah. No, you, you know, there was you, no we pressure, got, Gareth, got, against a big yeah. offensive line. There was no no pressure. We got a sack. One of them was clearly a missed assignment. Who was it? The, uh, the guy we called up from the practice squad, Sam. Nah, I want you to say I'm a menu. Not, who, I'm not falling. Uh, no, hang on. Oh, hang on. Hang on. He, some, somebody missed him, didn't they? Yeah. So oh, one of the sacks was a blown coverage. Yeah, the rest of the time, through. we just, yeah. I mean, t- to be fair, Gareth, Matt Stafford gave us that sack because Okwonu ran past him, tapped him on the uh, hip, and, oh, yeah, and he, some, he uh, Matt Stafford just yeah. like laid down on the ground thinking he's going to get absolutely I'm blaming Paul mauled. Scrimshaw for that, because in Discord he said, I want Paul to mention that name on the pod. So Wayne messaged me and said it's pronounced Okwonu. So oh, I'm cool, I'm stealing that off Wayne. So my good friend Wayne Humphreys was helping me out, Lee, and that smile on your face, I thought, yeah. God's sake, I'm going to have to mention that name. But you're right, Lee. It was like a duck-duck-goose game from school where he just kind of patted him as he went down didn't he yeah so he kind of laid down and I thought well you know what had he had he not done that even with his limited mobility he could probably be getting out of there but yeah I mean he kind of gave us that sack I think there's yeah uh, we, uh, we we could go on and on about it I think my my list of player names is much the same as you you had, had a shocker again um, and people are going to see that and, and obviously, as they get uh, targeted, I fully expect to see Lenore taken out of the slot and, and replacing um, Yadam on the uh, on the edges, just like he did last year. Um, Devondre Campbell he might be good against the run, but he struggles in coverage. Let's face it, again, people are seeing that. People are going to go for that matchup. And I think that's what concerned me most, is that the defence, whether there is a bit of... Uh, obviously bidding in with a new coordinator. And I'm not necessarily going to say it's the scheme alone. It's the players um, we've got and the jobs they're potentially being asked to do. They don't seem to be on top of their assignments. Now, it it it, it might come, but there's there's some worrying trends there, I think, in the, in the defence. I, I, I almost had as one of mine was just giving up the big plays. And I don't know about you, but there was just a sense of inevitability 
of you know the Rams are going to hit with the deep balls and they're probably going to connect because we don't seem to be able to stop those those big plays. Um, and the, of, of that one to two to at where we went down about the third, third, three or four yard line. I don't know if you saw how far Ward was. Um, he was wide open. I mean, Ward was there. Um, that probably should have been a, a, a touchdown. Um, uh, I think it soon soon was. I, I've got a question whether how much this might be an issue. Our um, pre-season was uh, battered by injury, so much so that we didn't do the joint practices. And I think because we didn't do the joint practices, it changed what we did in those pre-season games. There's been a lot of players, I think, on both sides of the ball who've looked sluggish, who've looked like it's still pre-season. Do you think that's real or do you think I'm just making excuses? No, I think that's real. I think that's a fair point. Um, pre-season was bad enough when we had four games to play. It's down to three and effectively we, we've really played two because we didn't play the starters at all one game. Um, in fact, did, did we play them the next game? We, they've had so little time to prepare. Like you said, they've, they've missed out on the uh, the joint practices as well, which um, Kyle Shanahan prefers them over the games anyway. We've missed all that. We've had the injuries, and it could be just a case of um, in, in practices, he may have reined it back a bit to, to make sure that we actually have a, a fit roster for game day. So, no, I, I think you're right. I think there's definitely some, something in that that's got legs. Yeah, it's certainly all our lack of legs in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I think on yeah. offense and defense, we we looked completely gassed, and yeah, and the Rams looked like they were getting stronger. And that's usually what we've done to other teams. And it just made me think: if so many players are not looking quite match fit, maybe that is, maybe that's a factor. But I don't think we can really necessarily use it as an excuse. I'm hopeful that that's actually uh, something more positive in the fact that they're ramping up that fitness um, and hopefully some of the uh, sharpness will come back with the fitness. I'm going to... Um... Sorry, Gareth. Do you not think God. where the offence gets a lot of praise for how we've got that dominance of the rhythm and Shanahan getting into a groove? Do you not think the defence is the same? How like the coverage feeds off the pass rush, how the linebackers mm. wreak havoc, how the secondary... like It's kind of like, like you said, they're all runs like... Kind of. And just like last night's game, chaps, we said a game of two hours, middle of recording, your group therapy session and technical problems arise. But all I was going to say, Gareth, before I hand over, mm. is ultimately the defence wasn't up to task against an opponent missing several key pieces. We've said before, they needed more pressure. Stafford had time to throw. The coverage struggled and the Rams created explosive plays which killed us. And like you said, the emotional roller coaster was back. The discard was going up and down and up and down. And ultimately, we lost the game. And I think, like you said, Lee, we haven't come on the show tonight to kind of like be the rah-rah for the team. We've got to talk about the mistakes. We've got to talk about people that were calling out. And even Fred got called out by El President here. So that just goes to show you, Gareth, what kind of game it was. Yeah, en enough about the defence. Let's shred special teams instead. Over to you, Lee. So, guess who we were missing on special teams? Who would have made special teams much better? Sammy Womack. I've said it time and time again, he was our best player on special teams for chasing down the kick returner, mm. the punt returner. He was always there when the ball got there. We never had a problem with big gains on their uh, kicks. When we had Sammy Womack, we got rid of him. And since then... Special teams has been garbage. In fact, the back end of last season, when he was missing in the NFC Championship game, the Super Bowl, I, I think you could tell then that special teams. We we don't have that player that we I can. Think this horse is bolted, Lee. I think you you. And, and I know it's bolted. We we can't do anything about it now, obviously. Um, but we need to do something about special teams. Every single year, we're the worst mm. team at special teams, and it it just gets tiresome. It does. I can't remember if we changed our uh, special teams coordinator recently. I think we did. I, th I think it's a little bit like the strength and conditioning coach. We've changed them every year and still we're not getting any better on special teams. I think, And, and special punished. teams could be pivotal. Momentum changing. Yeah. yeah, I think we're punished, Lee, for being in the Super Bowl because 
but everyone else has made their hires and we got rid of the special teams coordinator. And as as he said there, Gareth, it's been going for years. Yeah, How many has. times have we come on this show and we talk about three yeah. phases of football? And you said it, Gareth, the head coach, Carl Shanahan, puts his team together. And obviously Lee's going to beat the drum for his boy Warmack. But we always say special teams. When it's special needed. times. Yeah. And do you know what the annoying thing is? The last three times that we've had a, um, a fake punt against us, they've all been divisional rivals, twice mm. against the Rams and once against the Seahawks. That was so Which makes it even worse. Yeah. I, we said it on the preview show, there was going to be a trick play. And to be fair, they nearly had two because they had the Atwell throw that got negated. And like you said, Lee, divisional rivals, we always say, oh, Shanahan's this offensive genius. <laughs> McVay was in his bag of tricks, but yeah, that kind of fake punt, I definitely thought, oh, no, not again. Well, that that was important. That uh, if we'd been able to get the ball back at that point and, yeah. and milk a bit more of the clock, um, it could have been over at half time. Um, but obviously, the the punt return, getting so many yards, get, basically getting into field goal range at, at the end, was was the knockout blow. I think really. Um, I think it was Mustafa who came flying in and missed. Um, and I didn't pick him up on the defensive side of the ball, but that wasn't the only play where I think he had flown in and missed um, entirely. Um, he, the enthusiasm is is uh, good to see, but I think there needs to be a little bit more control there. Um, but yes, once again, this... I'd mentioned it to Paul before we started. It's it's And, and one of my three points, the deja vu, the we've seen this before, haven't we? Special teams contribute to costing us games. Um, getting hit on big uh, plays. Uh, that that was what I found least satisfying, I think, about the game. What annoyed me the most was that feeling of we've seen how this game ends before. The feeling of having watched this game before, of I can see the way this game is going. We're going to lose it, aren't we? And I had that midway through the third quarter, just that feeling the way the game was going. Um should we find some cheerful things? Let's start with Brock Purdy. We have talked about him briefly. Um, I thought he had an excellent game, and that's why I put thank God for um, Brock Purdy. Um, I think the 137 pass rating does it all. Um, says it all. He uh, His scrambling ability, I think he kept us in the game. I think it's good to see that people have talked about the, the narrative of him just being system, and he is putting the team on his back, even though he couldn't win the game. Um we were he certainly didn't contribute to us losing it um oh, no i definitely did and anything else go on um you know we love a bit of brock but um let's keep it so quick. so what i was going to say Gareth, is you should have kept your powder dry because there's plenty of negative energy to go around on the uh the offense as well yeah. uh, but you're right i mean brock birdie Birdie's i thought excellent. he was excellent yeah. can't believe some of the uh, things i've seen on twitter about um people comparing to jimmy garoppolo um, not, just on, Twitter, yeah, right, yeah. not just, mm. on Twitter, not just on Twitter, not just on Twitter. Home was in our oh, group right. as well, oh, which right. I was very surprised at. Boss, I was like, really? Yeah, it's, it's nonsense. He, he's nothing like Jimmy Garoppolo. Absolutely nothing like him. Um, I th- I thought he had an excellent game. I thought his wide receivers let him down. Um, had they managed to catch the ball, it'd have been a completely different game, and his stats may have been absolutely. High. In fact, his stats. More than likely, he'd have had another perfect game. Mm. Yeah, perfect. Close Close to, I mean, yeah. the talk about Jimmy, right? The big knock on Jimmy was he couldn't get the ball downfield. Brock completed 12 of 16 downfield pass attempts and three touchdowns. He tied his career high mark in passing yards on passes over 10 air yards, Gareth. He was averaging 11.1 air yards per attempt against the Rams. If you're getting that from your quarterback, Lee, with Mason averaging five yards an attempt, you look at those two stats alone and you think, you've won this game mm. easily. Your quarterback's thrown for 11 yards. Your running back's going for five yards per attempt. And I think the scrambling, whenever totally. Jimmy used to scramble out of the pocket, your heart would be in your mouth. Yeah. Brock had 10 rush attempts last night. Some were scrambles. I wouldn't say they were designed runs, but he put the team on his back and he ran around. He got Obviously, the job I don't done. like to see the quarterback running around, yeah. but he got the job done, as we've said. Mm. So I've I've got to say every time he does do it, I, I expect something special to happen. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it looks like. That's how much confidence I have in him. If, if he starts scrambling, I think that's it. If he's, he's scrambling now. He's quick yeah, over the he, ground. He is. He scampers he's along. Quick. 
and he's constantly looking down the field looking for that open receiver or looking to direct a receiver which he was doing last night as well he was directing receivers and it does it fills me with excitement I love watching him play he's nothing like Jimmy Garoppolo to me he is an elite quarterback and I don't think it's too early to say that now you, you see you see the game tape he puts together you, you see the stats that he has at the end of it he is making really difficult throws to make and um, one of the ones to Jennings I think there was three defenders around him so it had to be pinpoint he made a pinpoint Jennings took it in that was a great throw mm. it was a great throw a great catch and just to hear these um, these ridiculous things about Brock Purdy it, I, I just can't believe it yeah. I just cannot believe it so well, I mean Brock, I've gone straight I was just about to say Brock, Brock Purdy is like one of several good points about um, the offence mm. last night he likes he likes his three. history corner. Three, actually. And I know we've been missing history corner recently, but there's only been three times, chaps, in Niners yeah. history, a QB has completed 70% of his passes, Gareth, and thrown three touchdowns in a loss. Joe Montana, 85 against the Rams. Steve Young in 92 against the Bills. And Brock Purdy yesterday. Mm. So again, Lee, if you're going to kind of have that narrative that he's not an elite quarterback and he hasn't put the team on his back you just need to kind of go back and watch the game yeah. tape and take the emotion out of it we all get frustrated in a loss and I don't know if you saw Lee Baldy has done his breakdowns on Twitter and there's one towards the end where Ayuk looks wide open I think it's the one where Purdy's running around and any game tape if you freeze it at a certain angle can show you what you want it to see but I was saying I think that connection with Ayuk will come as they get more reps mm. together and we're paying for that off-season holdout. So, well, I think what stood out for me, perhaps out of uh, Purdy's excellent performance, was that he wasn't getting a huge amount of help from five guys in front of him, which is probably something else we we were going to need to talk about. Um, you talked about the scrambles because he had to do them. He was under pressure for a lot of the game. And there were people in his face a lot of the game. Um, we talked about it. The uh, offensive line got bullied in Minnesota. I've got to say, I think our offensive line got bullied again. I think that contributed certainly to our loss of momentum in the third uh, and fourth quarters. Um, and I think possibly some of that tiredness as well. Um, watching certain people on the uh, offensive line get just shoved backwards into Brock Purdy every single snap um, just underlines I think what a good game Purdy had because he had nothing or very little in the way of protection uncharacteristic mistakes I think from Trent Williams again I think we're seeing that hold out that lack of game fitness um, but the the O-line looked looked as bad as some of our O-lines have looked in the last few years. Am, am I being unfair, Lee? Tell no, I'm not. De de definitely not. So I, I kind of feel as of jinx Pooney because last night Pooney was just bang average at best. Um, and Colt Which McKibbins, made him one of the better team, one of the better. He, he did, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. He, he was players. still one of the better players on the offensive line, but he was just bang average. Colton McKivitt and Jake Brendel, they're just empty uniforms. The, the, the amount of times I caught McKivitt's got uh, turned round, or as you said, pushed right back into uh, Purdy's face was just unbelievable. Um, when we were when we were talking about this on Friday night, we were expecting quite an easy game against mm. their defensive line, and obviously didn't prove to be the case. Um, Aaron Banks, Aaron Banks, he he got done over time and time again as well. Uh, as you said, Trent Williams, uncharacteristically, he, he's had two poor games off the uh, belt now but again go back to pre-season he didn't have one mm. this is his pre-season i i'm expecting a big um a, a big response from all of them against the pats by which time trent uh, trent williams has no no excuse he's mm. now had three games to get game fit Ayuk has no excuse he's had three games to get game fit somebody needs to grab all the colt mckivitt uh, and, and help him out um, I, I think we should be used. Eric Sorbert, he should have been stood right next to him the full game helping him out because he was getting absolutely murdered player yeah. after player after player. I mean, full full credit to uh, the Rams. Um, what, what's his face? Byron Murphy the third. He, he had a cracking game. Um, I remember when the Rams uh, drafted him 
I was absolutely gutted. There was him and somebody the Seahawks took a defensive tackle. I was gutted when they got them because I knew that's going to be trouble for us. And he proved it. I mean, he looked really good against our offensive line last night. But that, that's no excuse. That's no excuse for Brendel. That's no excuse for McKivitz. No. Um, Pooney, I think, resulted in something like four, four or five pressures allowed. Um, I think one of his was a sack. He allowed Absolutely. a sack. Um, and there was one, I'm sure there was one player where I think he completely missed his assignment and his man just ran straight through. It didn't result in the sack, that one. Um, so that's good. But yeah, he he, he kind of came down to earth with the big bump last night. And See, that bump was uh, ram colours. We only allowed one sack. I mean, I think Jared Verse was another name, like the rookie. We only allowed one. I thought McKivitt. it was two. In it that case, it was McKivitt's. Right, we only allowed one. McKivitt's that give up really? the sack. I mean, we love a good start on this show. I said to Gareth off air, we pretty much won 99.9% .9 of every category you can look at, except the scoreboard. <laughs> and that's the one that counts. But according to this, we only allowed one sack, Lee. But you're right, the offensive line was not great. And do you know what I felt sorry for Puny? There was one where it looked like a designed run, but then Purdy saw something he didn't like and he had a pass, but... Oh, uh, that's when he was downfield. And was yeah. downfield. And again, yeah, it was not little lucky there. mistakes. Yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, to, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can kind of forgive him for that because that's the type of player totally, it is. Totally. Not pure. The, the primary read is a run. You're going to run it unless you see something. Purdy did see something, but then he didn't get rid of the ball as quickly as what he probably should have done, knowing, knowing that the offensive line were expecting a run and they may have been downfield. So I, I, that, that's just the type of thing that he'll get with experience, so I'm not too worried about that. And to be honest, I actually thought that was a good player by Purdy because mm. he did he did um, identify what was happening with the run. He knew it wasn't going to work, which is why he pulled the ball back at the last moment and went for the throw. So yeah, I'm, I'm not mm. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, rag on him for that one. <laughs> See, there is some positives. There is. <laughs> there is. Go on. Shall we? Uh, shall we move on to the most positive? Shall we? Let's let's give JJ his. Uh, his moments. I think the Mason Mason was okay. I think struggled. The offensive line did struggle, particularly in some of the short yardage. Um, good to see Eric Salbert um, involved and yeah. a bit of uh, coverage there for um, Kittle. Um, but it was JJ's night, so let's not take anything away from uh, um, Paddy Power's favourite player. <laughs> you know what? I, I am still dead set on getting a Jennings jersey. I am. I thought it was wonderful last night. Um, I think potentially going forward, what well, once I gets back up to speed again and gets that chemistry back with uh, Brock Purdy that he had last year, because he had amazing chemistry last yeah. year. I think with him and Jennings, because he obviously trusts Jennings quite a bit now. I think with two targets like that, where he's got this implicit trust, I I think it bodes well for our attack going forward, our offense. We just need to do something about the O-line to give Purdy enough time to, to throw the ball, which is ironic, to be honest, because there was that one player where Purdy had 11 seconds <laughs> to throw the ball. So they did do a good job at least once during the game. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I think that was Jennings, when the Rams rushed three against five. You'd expect possibly, five to win that. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, Jennings, everything he touches, um, he, he keeps all of, other than that very first throw, which I think was a, a good defensive um, defensive pass, pass defence. Um, other than that, yeah, it was great. And he took some big hits as well, he taking some of those throws. Well, we, we know he's tough. We know he's yeah. tough. Yeah. One, one, thing, one thing that's a little bit of a negative, because he's catching all the, uh, the balls all the time, yeah. he's, he's no longer winding the opposition yep. up. That's what I thought as well. He's he's yeah. He's he's not there needling cornerbacks. Yeah. All, all of a sudden he's all professional. Like yeah, just throw the ball at me. I'll catch it. Oh, I'm not going to bother uh, smash talking those. I mean, to be fair, his celebration. I think he was still running, wasn't he, <laughs> when he went down the tunnel? But eleven or twelve targets, chaps, 175 yards, and three touchdowns for Lee Gowland's favourite player, him and Jerry Rice are the only 49ers receivers with at least 10 catches, 150 yards and three touchdowns in one game. It's the first wide receiver with a hat-trick, chaps, since T.O. did it in 2001. Yeah. So he's in good company Gareth, there. Do you have a... Did, did you write down the ball predictions from Friday? 
Uh, no, because we recorded them. You didn't. Right. Um, Jennings featured highly in she yards. Really I you, know. You, I, I think I said 100 plus yards, two plus touchdowns, and obviously then a throwing touchdown as well. Yeah, I think that, that does sound so about right. So I was right. very disappointed in him last night, really. Yeah, for, for not getting the throws. <laughs> yeah, the, I think it's that's Shani's, that's Shani's fault, not dialing it up, isn't it? That's the content people have tuned in for. El Presidente is disappointed in Jennings. The only 49ers fan disappointed because <laughs> he didn't get his ball prediction. I like it, Lee. We're speechless now, Gareth, after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure that there's there's much more to say. I think that's that. I think we've we've pretty much taken apart everything else. Um, yeah. Special teams, we missed the, um, uh, pardon the pun, um, we missed talking about Moody. Um, uh, once again, I don't know, kickers, you always get, get the blame. Um, personally, I think get the ball a bit closer before you're yeah. going to blame. 55 um, yards. I was going to say it was 55 yards. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be too disappointed. You, 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 you can see it was one of the ones where the ball just fails to straighten out. You can kind of see. Yeah. If you don't kick it that, that way, you miss it the other side. So, uh, I think I'll people... tell you what, I, I put it down to people not being adult about this. Yeah. We're all adults. We lost. We know we lost. But Moody, Moody wasn't to blame. It was a 55 yard field goal attempt. Do you not think, Lee, it's because of like some people get hung up on draft position? I mean, as Brock Purdy's shown, it doesn't matter where you drafted. Yes, we took a kicker mm. in the third round. He has been quite reliable, but it was 55 yards out, Gareth, as you said. It was a lot to put on his shoulders. Um, and we still had chances to win the game after that. It wasn't like the last second of the game. So he gets a pass in my eyes, Lee, yeah. for that. Well, you know what I think about taking a kicker so early in the in the draft, but it, it hasn't let me, it hasn't swayed my decision over over what Moody did last night. Mm-hmm. There's no way I'm getting rid of him because I think he's a pretty good kicker. Mm-hmm. I think with more experience, he's just going to get better. It, it was just one of those things, mm-hmm. and he didn't miss by much. And like I said, it was 55 yards. He was 55 yards out. And you can't blame him because of all the other parts of the team that just did not stand up to be no. counted last night. No. The only other thing that I wanted to touch upon before you Don't. put this one to bed, Gareth, is I saw a few people on Twitter complaining about us being too pass-heavy. And I went and looked at the stats, and we had 34 rush attempts, and we had 31 dropbacks in the passing game. So for years, people have been wanting a more balanced offence, and I think we got that. I think we sh- we shown towards the end, I think there was one where Mason was trying to run it in the end zone, he lost yards. And it, it, there's not a perfect kind of storm for this. Shanahan obviously likes to run the ball, but I think with Brock, we've got that good mix now. So when those mm. people say, I want to run the ball more, I want a bit of context behind it, Lee, I don't think... Yeah, so I, I don't think they mean run the ball more over the uh, the four quarters. I think it's the balance of the player calling. So We move away to, from it. We do. And late we, in third we go quarters. run heavy in the first half pass heavy in the second half and I think that's what people are saying yeah. because what they are they're, they're given the context of um, the Atlanta block well not blocked the Atlanta losing um, the Super Bowl the fact that he was still passing the ball in the second half and I think yeah, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to make but no I completely agree with you I think we've got a very balanced um, mm. offence now and to be honest now we've got Brock Purdy under centre I am more than comfortable for us to throw the ball in the second half oh, yeah. because you can keep the clock moving as long as your receivers um, catch the ball. Mm. If your receivers don't let you down, the clock is still moving and you're getting more yards, you're more dangerous, you're keeping the defence honest. So I, I can understand why he did that. Um, like yourself, I mean, I've, I've seen the calls for Shanahan's head <laughs> again. I mean, I'll, I'll shake my head at that. I, I do think he's got a lot to learn still. But I can't see anybody who's better out there to replace. No, and people that's... probably turned on and said Belichick. I don't want Belichick as we, head coach. No, and we, week three, it's just it's so yeah. it's so premature. The, yeah. the, these are conversations at the back end of a disappointing season where where you're already looking looking ahead to uh, at the draft. Um, can we we get anything more positive out of this? I suppose one of my positivities are where we've we've started badly before and being able to turn it round. I think fitness is an issue, the more I, I, I think about it. And and we talked at the time about how Shanahan's meticulous preseason had been um, basically taken apart by so many injuries and that idea of the, uh, you know, the, the 
steel sharpening steel um if if we were peppering the team with with a lot less quality we weren't going to be practicing at the same standard maybe we are seeing uh, a little bit of an impact of, of that um and I think the Rams had a good game plan. And Matt, you know, we know Matt Stafford's a good quarterback. He executed well. Um, I'm glad Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua weren't around um, because that that could have been um, could have been a, a more of a upsetting game than it actually was. Um, but they're all, they're always tough uh, losing by the uh, by the odd field goal, aren't they? So but anyway, it's week three, and and as you said at the beginning, Paul, the sky is not falling in um play watch um renardo green my guy had had a few snaps um and probably a, a few to to forget so i don't really think there's much i can i can mention i, I thought that holden call on renardo green was quite soft quite soft indeed i mean i thought it was very unlucky to have that call against them well i thought you know the NFL these days get a bit grabby like that. You, yeah. you, you give the refs every every excuse to throw something yellow. To, yeah, I mean, to be honest, had, had he not had that holding call, that was a fantastic play from Green. And, and like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns there. I thought it was really soft and I thought it was a good player, to be fair. Uh, I've um, I've forgotten who your players are. Look at me. Isaac oh, my, it's Puni. I've talked about Puni. All right. Isaac Garendo. Garendo, a Garendo yeah. sign, yeah. yeah. Five, Gareth. He carried the ball five times, good to see. 19 yards. Mm. Not obviously the explosive players we used to seeing him in college, but it was good to kind of see Mason have that workload taken off and totally. Garendo being trusted to kind of run up the middle. So at mm. that point, we were all giddy because I thought, oh, the game's in the bag if Garendo's getting <laughs> rush yeah. attempts. But no, it was good to see him being eased in gently, so it might board yeah. well for uh, the future. We talked about these players getting a chance. Uh, he's a guy who, who perhaps took took what few chances he's got and, and has proved some reliability um, in a way that perhaps uh, other players we've talked about didn't take their chances. Um, score predictions. Um, <laughs> mm, I, 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 was, I was hopeful all the way through. I thought I could get mine bang on here um, and then ended up with nothing, I think. I know I might have got some points, but Lee, I thought you're mine looking, was looking close. Um, no, so you're still, in real you're still top of the table. Um, um, you are. You that's, are. That's completely embarrassing for the rest of me. Give me a second, because I haven't got it up on. Oh, I just want to take a screenshot of the uh, the table. Right, give me a second. I will get that online and get that up. Um, what about you? Paul? Yeah, Any you points? are still leading. I mean, it's very close. Obviously, it's only week three. I'm still shocked, Gareth, because Nadji jumped in the group chat last night about mm. one in the morning and was like, Lee, are you updating the score prediction sheet in real time? And Lee was like, show us how much attention you paid, Nadji, because that's what I did all last season. <laughs> that yeah. made me chuckle. I, I, so... yeah, I was quite surprised. <laughs> I, th I thought everybody knew I did that all the way nah. through the uh, game. <laughs> I mean, between the Discord game day thread uh, Jay Peplow texted me because I tried to stay out with the thread because I'm watching on Game Pass at home and I don't want to spoil anything. So when I saw my phone flash up, Nadji, and I opened it, I did think it was funny, the score predictions. And Gareth Gowland has created a monster. Anthony Thulger wants to win that bad. He's going to start picking against the Niners. And I've called that doing a Gowland because yeah. there's only one man on the show who tends to do that. There we go. That's tiny. Gareth top on the table with 11 wow. points. I'm second with 10. Um, both uh, the podcast Fearfuls as are in third place. I need to sort that table out. Um, Nadji in fourth with seven. Drawn with Paul for last place. Okay. How, how, how on earth far. have I got one more point? Don't quite understand that, but there we go. I don't get the logic behind no. it. But the, it I, is think, good I, think that, I think there the... must be a glitch in there. If I, I, if I was three you, points ahead, I'd, I'd understand. But one point uh, ahead? So I think that works right. Is it? Oh, well, there we are. There we are. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. It is good to see the chat on Discord getting into it as well. So mm. it is an integral part of the pod. But yeah, I don't think many people... I don't think anyone's got a perfect score yet, both on no, the pod faithfuls and us. So. Mm. 
There we are. Anyway, I think that game is well and truly flushed. Um, you wanted to mention something about the Newcastle uh, meetup with the uh, Chiefs fans, Paul. Yeah, so for new people to the group, they may have seen we've got an event coming up for the Chiefs game. So as you said, Gareth, this will be a group meetup like what we used to do before the official watch parties. So for those of you who are unsure, it's not like what we've just had in London. The group are meeting up in Newcastle with the Chiefs UK fan group. The bar is in the big market. Louise Liquor Vault have confirmed that they will stay open for the game. They have confirmed it will be streamed if we're not the Sky game. We've told them the numbers. I think at the moment there's about 35 to 40 49ers fans. There's about 10 to 20 <laughs> Chiefs fans. So they're making a full weekend of it for, for context of people are coming up for the weekend. They are coming up for on the Saturday. I'm travelling up on the Sunday. And I'm looking forward to kind of what I call an old school meetly, like mm. what we used to do back in the day. Yeah. Oh, so, so does that mean you're actually going to have some fireball this time? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Gareth, not well, me, not that old, old school. Coach Pablo is going to have some fireball before the end of that day. <laughs> uh, well, I've got a, a tournament this Saturday in Sheffield. I'm digging yeah, the cleats out. That. Over forties tournament, Gareth. I'm playing well, flag football for one last off. time. Well, so veterans, masters, geriatric mm. Joes is my team name. So seems very appropriate at my age. But yes, if you want any more information on the Newcastle meet, do head over to the Facebook page. There's an event page there, or drop me a DM. There is no tickets because it's just in a sports bar. There's no cost, and as I said, there's thirty-five to forty fighting and faithful UK members who said they are attending. So I'm looking forward to it. Great stuff. Uh, I sadly won't be there, but I'm sure you'll all manage admirably without me. Um, yeah, I'm sure you will. So uh, any final thoughts? I think we should just flush that and get on. Uh, what? One more final thought. Um, There's always one. Yita Gross Matos had a good game on defence. Completely forgot about him. But uh, yeah, he, he showed up and started playing some ball. And that, that was quite pleasing to see. So we are going to have a little bit um, competition for our places there. And we're not pressing the panic button, Gareth Ellis. No, this 49ers not. team no. is not finished by no. a long stretch. There's a lot no. of football to play. Keep no. the faith. Yeah, 18 and 2, baby. Get yeah. your brass out. That's all it means. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thanks, gents. It's been a pleasure. Always feel better. Um, never look forward to these sort of pods after a loss. Um, but we, I think we always end them smiling. So I um, hope everybody who has listened and watched feels a little bit better about the game uh, as well. We will be back soon, looking ahead to a matchup with the Patriots. It is only week three. We are better than this. The coaches have shown they can fix these sort of things. And we are going to get better because we have to. So don't have nightmares. Go Niners. Go Niners. Bang, bang, Nan again. San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurst, stiff farm going 99. Don't get it twisted. One and all with prime time. John Taylor, Jerry Rice down the